So we've talked about the major components of designing your model, but what we haven't talked about is how to interact with your model. And that's really where the observer slash user interface comes in. And it's important to design the interface well. You should make sure the buttons and sliders are placed where it makes sense to, play, sense to place them. It's often helpful to follow kind of the NetLogo style guidelines on this, which for instance says that anything that, you're, can mod, that you need to modify before you push setup should be above or to the left or something of the setup button, for instance. Anything that can be modified after the model's actually running can be below or to the right and things like that, right? But you also need to think about what the model visualization actually looks like. And um, uh, with Uri uh, Walensky and myself and Daniel Kornhauser, who is the uh, primary author on this paper, we wrote a paper about this a little while ago about creating good visualizations for agent-based models. And essentially, it comes down to three main things that we emphasize. And in many ways, this is true for any scientific visualization tool you're building whatsoever. And one is simplify the visualization, right? Remove the unwanted color as much, clutter as much as you can, right? Explain the components. So make sure it is obvious to someone who hasn't seen your model before what each of the components represents. And in NetLogo, for instance, you can add little notes into the interface that can be helpful for that, right? Finally, you're building a model to tell a story of some sort. You want to explain something to somebody or you want to help them explore a particular phenomenon. The model should make sure that that story is obvious. If it's not obvious, right, then uh, you need to think a little bit more about how the model should actually um, be set up and how you can emphasize that point even more. Uh, and so we highly recommend that you keep this in mind. After you've built your model and you're about ready to publish it, you're about ready to present your exciting results to the world, right? Think through, simplify, explain, emphasize, right? And if you can go through those three components, you'll create much better uh, visualizations, right? Um, one last thing we want to talk about that has nothing to do with visualizations when it comes to the interface is that sometimes you don't want to work with the visual interface, right? Instead, you want to work with a batch or a, a headless running version, right? And so what do we mean by that? Well, the normal way that we've been playing around with NetLogo so far is what we call the interactive method, right? It's uh, the, where you interactively control the interface directly via uh, the graphical user interface. Uh, but you can also do what's called a batch interaction. You've actually experimented with a little bit with this. When you run behavior space, you are actually doing batch interactions with the model, right? Now that's still being done via the GUI, um, but you can also do it without using the GUI. You can do something called headless running. And this essentially means that you bring up a terminal or a command line uh, and you can tell NetLogo to run an experiment without ever actually seeing the model. And it just runs on its own and it dumps the results into a CSV file for you to analyze. This is a great way to run models if they're computationally expensive and you want to run them for a lot of different runs and a lot of different simulations because of the fact that basically headless running doesn't even bother with large parts of the NetLogo code, right? The visualization part of the code. It means that the model runs much more efficiently and much quicker. Um, so these are important things to keep in mind when thinking about how you're going to set up your model and how you're going to run it. So you might be saying to yourself, that sounds great. How do I do headless running, right? Like that's what I want to do. Um, so to find out more about headless running, what I highly recommend you do is go uh, to the NetLogo user manual and click on behavior space um, because it's part of the behavior space code. And if you scroll almost all the way down to the bottom, you'll see this section called advanced usage running from the command line, often referred to as headless running, right? Um, so this actually involves running a completely separate NetLogo Java class called the headless main, right? And in the headless main, um, essentially all you need to do is you go to a command line. Um, so, you know, in, on the Macs we have something called terminal, right? And um, you go to wherever your code is, right? And in your code, you can actually tell it to run a particular experiment. Now, you have to have defined the experiment in behavior space uh, ahead of time, uh, but if it's there, then you can quickly get in and access your code. And in fact, let me, I'll show you quickly an example. Okay, so as I said, you might be thinking to yourself, that sounds great, let's actually 
show you show how to actually run the model headless, right? So I pulled up my terminal here, and of course, this is the command prompt on a PC. Um, and I now have, I need to go to where the model actually is that I want to work with. So in my case, I actually went to uh, the networks model and I'm going to play around with the small worlds model. And I left the user manual up just because, you know, I often forget exactly what the different parameters are I want. Um, I actually usually tend to copy this out into like a little notebook someplace, like um, Evernote is what I use, right? And then I add in the parameters. So I've done that. And so now I can just copy and paste the command I want back in. Uh, so, you know, it's just Java, it's the amount of memory, it's how the, the, how the file is actually encoded. Um, you need to give it the class path, which is where the netlogo.jar file is. And um, most in the Macs, it should always be at this location, uh, slash application, slash uh, netlogo uh, 5.3.1, slash Java, slash netlogo.jar, right? Um, if you've modified it, it might be in a different location. Uh, and then this is just telling it to use the main uh, component of that. Then we have to specify the model, and then we have to specify the experiment, and then we have to specify the output, right? Um, oh, it looks like for some reason my code got corrupted a little bit. I must have messed it up somehow. So anyways, I can go back and fix that quickly by just modifying the command line. Always annoying to have to go all this way back. But I can see, you know, that it says T logo rather than net logo. Okay. So this will now run the experiment headless. You'll notice there's no GUI popping up or anything like that. Um, and it'll just complete and it'll save the results off to this rewire.csv file. I can then open that rewire.csv file and it, you know, pops up in uh, Excel, but you can do it anything and you can see the results of your model. So that's how you do a headless experiment. Um, and you know it's very useful uh, for running the model um, if you want to run it a bunch of times.